Hello students, we will try and see the applications of the nonced equation in our discussion on electrochemical equilibrium today. So before I proceed on to the application, let me remind you that we are talking about an electrochemical reaction equilibrium when there is no current flowing through the circuit as shown here. And this is a situation where I am interested in understanding how I can equate the electrical work with the decrease in Gibbs free energy when the chemical reaction occurs in the when an infinitesimal amount of reaction occurs in the electrochemical cell. And we have seen that using the electrochemical potential, then one can actually write down what DGTP is going to be and the electrochemical reaction equilibrium can be written down in terms of the uh, combination of nu i, nu i tildes that is the electrochemical potential. Now as usual what happens is you do not want to work with the chemical potential or the electrochemical potential that you cannot directly measure. So instead of these inconvenient quantities you introduced the reaction gives free energy and as you observed over here that this is how the reaction gives free energy varies as the reaction progresses. And since we could also establish the relationship between the delta Rg and the zero current cell potential, we understood that if at some point of the reaction delta Rg that is the uh, reaction gives energy is less than zero, then the zero current cell potential is going to be positive and that would indicate that the cell will have the chemical reaction spontaneously moving towards the forward direction. The reverse situation is observed when you have a negative slope of this plot of G versus Xi and under that condition we understand that the zero current cell potential is going to be negative and the reverse reaction is going to be spontaneous. That would be driven by the electric current from an external source. And therefore, we understand that the equilibrium condition would correspond to this minimum in this curve whereby delta Rg would be equal to 0 and we also could show that it is under this condition that from the nonced equation I can put E is equal to 0 and correspondingly the zero current cell potential would be non-zero when the uh, system is away from equilibrium. It is going to be zero when the system is at equilibrium and at equilibrium the composition is going to be connected to the standard zero current cell potential that is uh, represented here by the symbol E0. And from here we again get to see that with all these considerations in mind, we can find out that since at equilibrium E is equal to 0, the equilibrium constant for the cell reaction can also be determined using the value of E0. So the question was what is E0? E0 is the standard reduction potential of the cell at 25 degree centigrade and 1 bar if you know the half cell standard reduction potentials, you can find out the E0 value for the entire cell and when you put it back in the Nernst equation, you should be able to find out what for a given composition of the cell, what should be the zero current cell potential and if you have the system at equilibrium, then knowing E0, you can find out what K equilibrium is for the given cell reaction. Now with this background in mind, let us first discuss the application of these concepts in finding out the standard molar entropy and enthalpy change associated with a cell reaction. Now going back, let me think about 
the kind of measurement that I am going to carry out if I need to understand this type of uh, determine this type of thermodynamic quantity. The idea is in your laboratory you will use your electrochemical cell and measure its E0 value at different temperatures. Now how can you measure different E0 values at different temperatures? Obviously for a given electrode if you couple it with a standard hydrogen electrode for which the standard reduction potential is 0, then you can always find out what is the E0 value for the target electrode is at a given temperature and here some of the specific temperatures are shown to you where these measurements have been made and this is a typical variation of the E0 value as a function of T. Now how am I going to use these values to find out the standard molar entropy and the standard molar enthalpy of the reaction taking place in my electrochemical cell. Now obviously the first relationship that I start with is the standard reaction Gibbs, free en Gibbs, uh, reaction Gibbs energy that is related to minus N F E naught. Now this is a function of temperature. So I do expect that E naught should also be a function of temperature. At the same time, I also know that if I take a derivative of G with respect to T at a given, at a given pressure, then this is equal to negative of entropy. Now G is a function of xi and uh, I can take a temperature derivative of the standard reaction gives energy at a given pressure and then as we have discussed in our earlier lectures, this would be equal to negative of the standard entropy, molar entropy associated with the reaction occurring in the system. And therefore, for this purpose, what you will have to do is you need to understand that the left hand side of this equation is nothing but a temperature derivative of the E0 value. So where do I get this quantity from? If I have measured the E0 values at different temperature, in that case uh, evaluation of the slope of the uh, this curve at a given temperature would give me an idea about what is going to be the value of delta R is not by Nf at that temperature. And since it is nearly linear, not exactly uh, a straight line, this plot, therefore you understand that delta R S naught is going to exhibit a weak temperature dependence. Following the same argument, we can say that I can also find the standard molar enthalpy associated with the cell reaction. And that is because I can now add the standard reaction gives energy and then I can add the temperature times the standard reaction entropy and the sum of these two is going to give me the standard reaction enthalpy associated with the chemical reaction in the cell. So if I put it back then I find that combining this relationship and this relationship I am going to get that delta R H naught is calculable if you know E naught at a given temperature and also the slope of the curve E naught versus temperature at that given temperature. And please remember in this entire exercise we are keeping the pressure constant. Therefore, the conclusion is as follows by carrying out a measurement of E0 values at the, in the standard state, we can find out the change in standard state molar entropy during the cell reaction. And this method provides us 
a non-calorimetric determination of the enthalpy change in a cell reaction. Now you would remember that when I am trying to determine the enthalpy change during a reaction using calorimetric methods, there are problems associated with the loss of heat from the calorimeter through radiation. And therefore, this particular experiment is expected to give you hassle-free and more accurate determination of the enthalpy change. Now, let us take an example where we have used these two expressions that we have already derived in the earlier slide. And in this slide, I have taken this cell where I have on the cathode a silver silver brom uh, bromide uh, uh, electrode immersed in an hydrogen bromide, aqueous hydrogen bromide solution. And the other electrode immersed in it is a hydrogen gas electrode. And this is connected uh, and hydrogen gas is bubbled on the surface of a platinum wire. And this platinum wire and the silver wire, these two are used to complete the circuit. Now, following what we have learned in our earlier lectures, we can write down the cell reaction as follows. One mole of silver bromide solid will react with half mole of hydrogen gas, giving rise to one mole of silver solid plus one mole of HBr aqueous. And since I am talking about half mole of hydrogen gas being converted, therefore you obviously understand that here the number of electrons, the number of moles of electrons transferred at each electrode is equal to 1. And in this case, experimental su uh, studies suggest that if you measure E0 as a function of temperature at different uh, uh, at, a give, at the standard uh, condition, in that case the E0 value in volts is given by an expression like this where the temperature T is mentioned in the units of K. So from this expression we can say that if I am at a temperature uh, T equal to 298 Kelvin, what is going to be the E0 value? As you see, when T is equal to 298 Kelvin, these two terms vanish and I am left with only this quantity and therefore E0 at T equal to 298 Kelvin will be 0 0.07131 volt. Therefore, at T equal to 298 Kelvin, I can very easily calculate what is going to be the standard reaction Gibbs energy and that is nothing but minus F E naught because N is equal to 1 here. Now I am going to put in the negative sign, then the value of the Faraday constant and the value of uh, E naught. And if I do that, then I find that delta R G naught is going to be equal to about minus 7 kilojoules per mole at 298 Kelvin. Now, if I look at the expression of E naught and try to obtain delta S naught, what is it that we shall do? We will find out first DE naught DT and the value of this derivative I will evaluate at T equal to 29. Eight, uh, 298 Kelvin and you will be very easily uh, able to show that this is going to be a value like this and once I know it, once I know the value of n and since I know the value of f then I can use this expression over here which I have already derived and find out what the standard reaction entropy is going to be and this you will find to be equal to minus 48.1 joules Kelvin inverse mole inverse. And correspondingly, you can also find out the standard 
reaction enthalpy corresponding to the cell reaction as shown here. Now here you might ask me that in this case the chemical reaction is associated with a negative change in entropy as given by this particular relation. So why do you think that this system will have a spontaneous cell reaction whereby silver bromide will oxidize hydrogen to H plus and itself get reduced to silver solid? The answer is since this cell reaction is taking place at a constant temperature and pressure, therefore the direction of spontaneous, uh, spontaneous cell reaction is determined by the change in Gibbs free energy. And in other words, as we have seen from the uh, chemical equilibrium discussions, this will be decided by the sign of delta R G naught in this case. Since delta R G naught is negative as shown here, therefore the reaction at 298 Kelvin is going to be spontaneous in the direction whereby hydrogen is converted to H plus and AGBR is reduced to silver 0. Now that we have discussed the very first application, we are going to now talk about determination of the activity coefficient of an electrolyte. As you understand that unless I find out the activity coefficient of an electrolyte, then I will not be able to use the simple expressions for the ideal systems that we have developed so far. So let us go back and consider how to determine the activity coefficient of an electrolyte. And in this case, I will take this specific definition for the concentration of the actual concentration of the electrolyte and I will do so by expressing it in the molality scale. So what would be the molality scale in this case? If I have an electrolyte in water say, in that case there may be uh, two or more components of that electrolyte. The electrolyte will dissociate in water and release those ions. So let me consider the ith ion which has been released in water because of the dissociation of this electrolyte. And then I would say Mi is the number of moles of this of the ith ion per kg of water. So that is what the molality of the ith ion means. Now when I talk about uh, the activity then in that case in the molality scale for the ith component the activity will be given by a, uh, uh, a product of the activity coefficient gamma i for the ith component multiplied by the actual concentration of the ith component in the molality scale. So here you see that mi has this unit of moles per kg and if I define the m0 as 1.0 mole per kg which is the standard value of molality then mi by m0 is a dimensionless quantity and therefore I understand that in this expression mi by m0 is a quantity that I can fix from outside by dissolving a desired number of moles of the electrolyte in water. On the other hand gamma i this is the indicator of the departure of the behavior of this solution from ideal solution behavior. Now as you understand that thinking about the concentration in terms of individual ions may not be useful because whenever you dissolve a strong electrolyte which has this general uh, uh, formulae like formula like uh, A nu plus and B nu, B nu minus. Now when you are working with an electrochemical cell 
what you would probably working with is a strong electrolyte having a formula like this. When it happens, you actually add a few moles of the electrolyte as a whole and therefore when it dissociates in water in order to maintain electroneutrality, this condition must be satisfied which means that M plus is the molality of the cation and nu plus is the number that is associated with A in its uh, formula here and the ratio of this, these two numbers must be equal to the correspond ratio of the corresponding numbers for the cation and this ratio must be a constant and that basically says that in an electrolyte solution if you are looking for the change in uh, Gibbs free energy at a given temperature and pressure you cannot independently vary the concentration of the cation or the anion because this electroneutrality condition is to be maintained and therefore you write down dg simultaneously as nu plus mu plus plus nu minus mu minus and in general you give it this notation mu dm where mu is the effective chemical potential for the electrolyte such that it is defined as nu plus mu plus plus nu minus mu minus taking into consideration that the electrolyte has two species one type of cation and one type of anion and therefore dg would be given in terms of nu i mu i ni mu i and this follows from the Gibbs to him relationship. Now once I have this idea in mind now let me simplify the representation in terms of what is known as a mean ionic molality. So by definition the mean ionic molality of an electrolyte whose formula is like this is given in terms of the nu plus raised to the power of nu plus multiplied by nu minus raised to the power of nu minus and then we take a geometric mean of these two numbers where nu plus minus is given as nu plus plus nu minus and I multiply it with this molality m which appears over here. Now similarly if I follow this expression I would understand that the mean ionic activity coefficient for the entire electrolyte will now be given by an expression like this which is nothing but the geometric mean of the individual ions activity coefficient each raised to the stoichiometric coefficient that appears in the formula for the electrolyte. Now with these two definitions the chemical potential of the electrolyte turns out to be mu uh, is equal to mu naught plus the mu uh, the nu plus minus that has been defined over here and RT ln gamma plus minus into m plus minus. Now this equation tells you that you if you know the formula for the electrolyte that you are using you can immediately estimate what gamma plus minus would be and what m plus minus would be provided you know what is the concentration of that solution. That is because you know nu plus, you know nu minus and you know m. Now let me have a look at the use of this relationship. If you are not doing any experiment then you can take help of what we have already discussed as the debye huckel relation. If you have a very dilute solution of the strong electrolyte then log of gamma plus minus can be determined by using this expression 
where I is the ionic strength of the electrolyte solution. But please remember that here by knowing the A, Z plus, Z minus and the ionic strength that you are using for your solution, gamma plus minus is known and then the activity, overall activity of the electrolyte can be written as A plus minus that is equal to gamma plus minus into M plus minus. So, this is one way of obtaining the mean activity of the electrolyte. The other way of course is not taking help of the Debye-Huckel relationship but constructing a cell and measuring its cell potential and therefore all you will have to do is write down the cell equation, cell reaction, write down the nonst equation for it, equate to 1 all the activities that can be equated to 1 and then you have a very simple expression for the given system. And now if I say that I am using B molal HCl solution in this case, then what happens is you can find out the gamma plus minus logarithm of that by knowing E that is the measured zero current cell potential, E naught that is the known standard zero current cell potential at a given temperature if B is known. So, this is how even in a very complex system such as an electrolyte solution, you can find out its activity coefficient. We shall continue our discussion in the next lecture about how to use these uh, concepts to find out solubility product and pH of a solution. Thank you.